What up, what up, welcome back to the channel, I'm Modi J and we are locked in, this is episode 2 of American Horror Stories. Now I know we got episode 1 and 2 on the same day, but I'm not dropping this one till Wednesday, which is today, because I want to keep it on the schedule since the show comes out every Thursday and I don't want to just have 1 and 2 and make you guys wait. But we know episode 1, Rubber Woman, they moved into the house and a lot of scary things were going down. She put on the suit. She go crazy when she puts her suit on. At the end of the episode, she killed all the girls. And the therapist was talking to her like, you just killed some girls. But before we get into episode two, shout out to the notification gang. If you're new to the channel, you want to be part of this, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button, it's the easiest thing you can do. And we on that road to 7,000 subscribers. Thank y'all for growing with me. But this is part two. And this is a continuation of what happened in episode one. So we're going to pick up where we left off. And we're going to see how do they handle this in this crazy house. First thing I can say is we need to get rid of that suit permanently. But let's jump into it. This is American Horror Stories, episode two. To start this episode off, we see a young lady named Ruby. Now she got the little switchblade on her and she's chasing around one of the ladies that look like, hey, I'm just working here. I'm just a helper, you know? And she's chasing her around the house and she has a stab wound on her, but she actually falls over the top stairs and she hits the ground. And this girl, Ruby, she looks like she ain't playing around. Ruby chases her down into the basement. And one thing I tell y'all, scary movies, you never go into the basement. The basement is the most dangerous place in any house, followed by the attic and then the kitchen and then the bathroom. Those are the, the, the order of places you'll get killed. But she chases her down there and the rubber woman is down there and it's scarlet and she finishes her off. So her and Ruby, they're working together. I told you this house and this suit is... <sighs> We got to do something about that suit. Now, Ruby and Scarlett, they're taking a bath because you got to get all that blood off of you. But Ruby starts to give us a detailed story of her life. Now, when she was younger, her parents died. So she went and lived with an uncle. Now, this uncle, he was taking care of her, giving her ice cream, buying her toys. But then he ended up changing up on her. So he started abusing her. He whooped her for leaving the top off of uh, the toothpaste. I bet she didn't forget to put that top on there after that. But... He whooped her from that. He actually burned her on her back. And as she got older, he said that he was going to give her a gift that she wouldn't forget on her 16th birthday. Now, they drive out to Arizona. They go to Tucson. I lived in Phoenix. Tucson is just as hot. But they get there. And when she gets out, she says her uncle's recording her going over to the other people because it's a family. And it turns out this is her parents. Her parents sold her to them. To, uh, to her uncle who isn't her uncle. So for her, she was like, oh my goodness. She didn't cry or anything, but she figured she was gonna kill herself and then save the world. Now this house is infamous for people dying in here, people getting killed. So she snuck into the house that they're in that Scarlett's parents bought and she slit her wrist. Now it was big news around, you know, LA, like old girl kills herself in there. But it didn't make as big as headlines as everything else. So that's why she's stuck in the house because she killed herself within this house. And the reason no one heard about it is because the realtor of this house found the body and the suicide note. And she just buried the bones in the backyard. And ever since then, Ruby's been stuck in this house terrorizing everybody. And now what Ruby is trying to do is convince Scarlett, kill yourself. And we could be here together. Like, we're having so much fun right now. I'm like, yeah, we're having fun, but I'm alive. <laughs> I'm not about to kill myself and be stuck in this house. But Scarlett, she's like, nah, I don't know about that. She's like, well, wait a minute. Take your hands off of me. Are you killing myself? Mm, that's a little too far. Now that these four young women are missing, the ones that were messing with Scarlett, they set her up. And we already knew it was going to be ugly for them for even coming over to the house. But... These FBI agents, these detectives, they're talking to the dads, Troy and Mike, like, um, we have records that your daughter was talking to them. And they're like, well, she's been here all night and no one's been here. But one thing we do know is those bodies are upstairs in that attic <laughs> behind the wall that she put up. But they don't know this. And the cops are just saying our records are showing, you know, that, that your daughter talked to her. And at this point, whenever you talk to the police, listen. Always say, I'm going to talk to him with a lawyer. Never talk one-on-one -on -one with the police. 
because they would try to twist your words and make you fit whatever problem they have. Anytime they said something to me when I was in the military, oh, no, I'm going to go ahead, <laughs> get me a lawyer. Y'all go talk to them. I never talk to the police one on one. You just don't do it. They bring Scarlett down after the cops leave and they're like, Scarlett, what, what happened? We know them girls are bullying you. What happened? Were they here? She was like, uh, I don't know. Maybe the ghost killed them. Now, Mike and Troy, they're like, man, what the heck is going on? We ain't been in this house but a couple of weeks. If that, I'm thinking it's maybe a couple of days. But Scarlett's like, maybe the, maybe the ghost killed them. Because they all know that this house is haunted. But they're like, come on, Scarlett, what, what really happened? And she just storms off. Scarlett knows what this house can do. So if you see her, she laying on the bed, she ain't going to sleep. Cause last time she went to sleep, the rubber man was on the ceiling. So she's sitting here with a knife like, man, whatever happens, oh, I'm gonna be prepared. The therapist pops up. Scarlett's like, oh man, I thought it was somebody else. She's like, look, we really need a book a session. You didn't kill four girls. You didn't bury them in the wall. And out of nowhere, Maya comes and stabs the therapist in the back and the four girls show up cause it's revenge time. Now Maya, she's the leader of this. And all the girls, the girl in the back and the yellow's like, let's kill her now. Maya's like, nah, we're gonna make her suffer. Cause as long as she's in this house, we can terrorize her. And she's gonna be wondering, is this the day I kill her? Is this the day they're gonna come and get me? And out of nowhere, Ruby comes and protects her. Ruby and Scarlet, they built this bond, this sisterhood. We already know Ruby wants Scarlet to kill herself so she can be in this house with her. Now the girls that are with Maya, they're like, oh man, we, we can't mess with Ruby because Ruby's protecting her now. And they're like, why? What did she do? And they show that Ruby actually pulled one of the girls' face off. And she's like, man, she just be terrorizing us around the house. My thing is, y'all are ghosts too. Y'all can't die again. It's just gonna, okay, tear my face off. I'm gonna get you the ball. <laughs> like, we can go back and forth. But Ruby, she's actually about that life. And Maya and her crew, they ain't. Family therapy session. What do we know about this right now? We know the therapist is dead. We know the therapist actually talks to Scarlett. Now, it's interesting because they're in a haunted house, so it's possible for anybody to see the ghost. Now, Troy and Mike, they get to argue and talking about, hey man, this house is too expensive. So they're arguing back and forth about it like this is a bad decision. And the therapist, she's just sitting there, and, and Mike says, well, you know, if bad things happen, people can see stuff in here because he thinks he's seeing ghosts. And the therapist says, well, that's it for right now. We know Troy and Mike, they don't agree on this house. I don't know who thought like, hey, let's buy a haunted house and, you know, make it a haunted house and try to sell tickets. But that's where they're at. And the therapist is like, no, that's the end of that, because we know she's dead and she ain't really trying to hear none of this anyway. Now, we know that. Troy and Mike, they're strapped for cash. This house is too big, they can't afford it. So they have to get a contractor. This man, Adam, comes in and he underbids everybody. He's looking at the work that needs to be done. He's like, okay, yeah, I could do this. Oh, who, who put these bricks up? It's a little uneven, like, I don't know what they're doing here. But Mike comes in and he sees that Adam and Troy, they're a little too close. And he's like, man, you can give some BJs and I don't want to get into all that because that's not my lifestyle. But he's saying whatever you do for him personally isn't going to be enough to fix all that. And Adam is like, well, you know, I can, I can make something shake in this house. You know what I'm saying? You know, just let me work here. But we see that Troy and Adam, they, they kind of got a little relationship going on here. They're a little closer than what they need to be. Mike is the only one thinking logically. Financially, we can't afford this house. Financially, we can't refurbish uh, this house. Financially, we're screwed. I'm not going in my 401k. I'm gonna get hit with 60%. Oh, tax, no, hex, no. Yeah. And Troy's like, nah, look, we need to hire Adam. He can really help us with this. And Mike is like, I don't think so. Troy and Adam, they doing some other stuff and they talking about if you want your marriage to, to last, you and I need to have some physical interaction and it'll distract you, but that's neither here nor there. We gotta go up into the attic because something is funky and it's coming behind those bricks. So what they think it is is, oh man, it must be a dead raccoon or something in there. Adam, he actually brings some guy over here. I don't even know what his name is, but this is his assistant. They're like, man, we what what is this, man? Once Adam opens it up, we see the dead girls in there and that's where this funk was coming from. I know Scarlett didn't think I can just bury these bodies behind the wall and everything will be all right. But she did anyway, and now it's got the whole house stinking. 
So Adam kills his assistant because he's seen this. The reason he did this is now it's blackmail. Adam says, hey, Troy, Mike, y'all got this in the wall. Okay, I know about this. I won't say nothing and I'll get rid of this assistant's body also, which he throws into the wall. But I'm going to have to be able to mess with Troy the whole time. I'll finish this house up and now I want a profit of the house also. So now instead of splitting this between Troy and Mike, they got to split into a third with Adam and Adam is allowed to mess with Troy. That is blackmail at its finest. Troy and Mike, they're running around the house because it's like, oh my goodness, Adam just killed somebody. When they get downstairs, they see Maya in the crew. They also see the assistant. They try to run out the back door, but when they run out the back door, they come back through the kitchen door. And now Mike is looking like, wait a minute, are we, are we dead? When you die in the house, you can't leave the house. So when they ran out the back door, it just brought them back through the house. And Troy's like, what, what, wait, what's going on? Now they're in the kitchen crying because they don't understand what the hell is going on. And guess who's behind them? Ruby. And she's looking at them like, mm-hmm, I got y'all. Now all I got to do is convince Scarlett to kill herself because I got you too. Now everybody in the house is dead. Scarlett gets back and Adam's there with the assistant talking about, well, now you got to get some lime to cover up that smell. And the assistant says, I made a list of everything we need. <laughs> Everybody in this house is just getting cut up, stabbed, killed. She runs into her dad's room and they're in here dead because Ruby got to them. So now the only person that is alive is Scarlett. Let's count how many people are dead. We got Maya and the crew. That's four. We got the therapist. We got Adam. We got the assistant. We got both dads. That is nine people. Nine people in two episodes that are dead in this house. Now, everyone's trying to figure things out. The therapist, she's over here sipping her tea. Well, actually, you guys are stuck here. You know, I've been here for a couple of days. And they're like, well, yeah, this is what this is what life is. It just continuously every day is hell. And they're like, we got to get you out of this house, Scarlett. We got to find you somewhere to live because there's a hundred spirits in here. And not all of them are good. And they start talking about Ruby. And Scarlett says, nah, Ruby's good. She's actually protecting me because we know that they have a little bond. And they're like, what? How long have you been dealing with her? She's just like, let's not worry about it. I'm going to stay here. Now, hear me out. It's Halloween. And Scarlett's like, why don't you come with me? Because she doesn't understand that they can't really leave the house. But Ruby explains to her, oh, I can come with you. Because every year on Halloween, that's the one day they're allowed to leave the house. But they got to be back before sun up. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It should be they get the whole october 31st but they got to be in before the sun is up the next day and that goes for all the spirits in the house so my and the crew they like halloween let's get revenge on the girl that killed all of us so they about to go out and they about to try to go to war with ruby all over scarlet scarlet and ruby they're out they're having a good time just walking amongst people no one's even noticing that oh man that's a ghost it's a dead girl but they decide to have the conversation of, I don't think I'm ready to just give away everything and, and be stuck in that house just yet. I mean, that would be boring. 364 days stuck in the house and Ruby's still trying to convince her. Like, y'all could have had this conversation at the house. Enjoy your one day of freedom, Ruby. We almost forgot about Scarlett's friend, Shanti. Now, she's outside and she's crying and she's tearing up because... She can tell that Scarlet has changed. And she says she looked online and saying that she fits the description of a psychopath. So she's looking at like nothing scares you anymore. But of course, nothing scares Scarlet. She lives in this house. Her parents are dead. Her therapist is dead. She killed four girls. There's a dead uh, contractor in the house. So for her, she's like, yeah, nothing scares me. I live with ghosts. But Shanti doesn't know this yet. And she's just trying to say, I'm losing one of the only friends that I have. Shanti told the cops that she doesn't believe Scarlett could do anything bad. But guess who pops up? Maya and the crew. And they're like, you should have told the cops how much you know about Scarlett and how she could do something evil to us. So for that, we're going to have to make you pay for this. But of course, Ruby shows up and she says, if you touch Scarlett or you touch Shanti, y'all going to have problems to deal with me. Now, Ruby, she's really holding it down for Scarlett. She made that promise to Scarlett also. I won't kill you and take away you from living. But in return, I hope that you come and join me one day. 
Maya and the girls, they back down. But believe me, Ruby, this isn't over yet. And there's no way y'all are making me believe that this is Michael Jackson's daughter. I'm sorry. Every time I see her, I just laugh. Like, this isn't this man's child. But there's neither here or there. This girl is dead. And Ruby, we coming for you. One thing Shanti told Ruby is, if you really love Scarlett like you say you do, then let her live her life because I'm not talking to her. So Ruby's looking at it like, yeah, you might be right. But we go to Scarlett and she goes into this house and she sees Ruby in there. She's going to work killing people. And Scarlett has this damn rubber suit on. And when we know she has this rubber suit on, she's wilding out. So Ruby says, there's one in the corner if you want it. She puts the mask on. She gets the killing too. Maya's crew, they start chasing at the Scarlet. It's like, oh no, it's a full out war. We outside, we out here with it. Now, Nicole, the girl in the yellow, she ends up chasing Scarlet, but Scarlet, she getting low. I'm talking about she running, spinning around, getting loose. And then somebody, Nicole, is that you? Because they're outside on Halloween, everyone can see her. And this looks like Nicole's brother. And he's like, Nicole, is that you? And they just go over and hug each other because everyone thinks that she's dead. The sun's about to come up and like the gargoyles, they'll turn into stone if they out when the sun comes up. But they get back to the house and Maya, she's like, oh, no, nah, it ain't no way she's coming back in the house no more. Are we going to be on her? And Scarlett, she says, she's right. I'm not going to come back in this house. I got to live my life. But is it possible that I go in there and say bye to my dad's well, without anybody killing me? And Maya, she says, yeah, we'll let you do it this one time. And the good thing about us being dead is she flips her hair. We don't have to grow old and get ugly. Now, William and Nicole, their brother and sister, he's like, man, I got to see my sister. But who should I tell the, the police killed you? And they're like, hey, just tell them that they'll find our bodies in the house. And Ruby says, tell them I killed her. Ruby McDaniel, tell them I live here and they need to come and rest me. Ruby just want to get some more kills in. But he's like, all right, well, fine, you know, see you in a year. Scarlett goes in there. She starts packing up her stuff. The dads, they're in there. They're like, you got to go to school. She's like, ah, school sucks. This kind of reminds me of uh, the, not the Adams family, but Beetlejuice when she was living in the house with them. But they're like, all right, well, we got to let her do her thing. Because at this point, the, the stuff she didn't see, <laughs> Life is going to be easy as long as you ain't got to deal with this no more. Scarlet leaves the house and the house just goes back to regular law and order in there. They in here making pancakes. Maya and the crew, they over there eating at the breakfast table. Troy here. And Scarlet actually calls Maya. And Maya's like, hey, how is everything? And they're like, oh, man, you know, things are normal here. But Scarlet has something else that she's doing while she's out and about. Because everybody in the house, they just chilling and relaxing. Turns out Scarlet, she went and found Ruby's fake uncle. And you see what's in her hand, that hammer, because uh, <laughs> it's time for action. Now, if I seen a girl walking across the street in a rubber suit with a big ass hammer, I'm like, um, yeah, this might be the one time. Hello, 911? There's a rubber woman, handyman type person walking over here. Now, we need backup right now. So she goes over there and she's about to handle the uncle. And from there, Scarlet and Ruby's bond just got bigger and better over time. And once a year, Scarlet comes back on Halloween. So her and Ruby can be together and they just hug it out. And they probably do a little more than that, if you know what I mean. All right, there you go. Episode two of American Horror Stories. Man, that murder house is something else. Let me know what you guys think about the situation. Do you think that Maya and the crew, they're going to try to hunt Scarlet those once a year? Or it's going to be a different ghost that's going to come and try to get her? Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. I'm Moe J. If you like the content on the channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit your like button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.